Hey, 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 welcome to Audiotopsy. We've got a whole new season waiting for you. You may have noticed we're doing something a little bit different this season. This is Thursday night instead of Friday. So welcome and thanks for coming along for the ride with us. Uh, for those of you who are new to Audiotopsy, we are doing something a little bit different. This isn't the classic reaction. We aren't picking songs that we've never heard before that we're listening to for the first time, though sometimes for some of us that is the case. And we're primarily focusing on lyrical content. And when we pull apart and analyze the lyrics, are these lyrics reflecting a biblical worldview or not? So thanks to having Kenny C here, our musician in residence, we do get some really cool uh, information now and then about the melodies and the licks and things like that. And we love that. Um, but we are doing a lot of presuppositional analysis on song lyrics here. And we hope that you like what we're doing. How yeah. many is this, I wonder? We've been doing this for a while. I bet we're up to over 10 by now. Like Oh, sure. 10, 10 yeah. audio copsies at yeah. least. Well, we started in September. Okay. Okay. So I was I was in I was living in Cleveland then. That's oh, right. That's right. That's right. So we started it when I was in Cleveland for two months. So that's about six, seven. Well, months, good night, like Cleveland. Here we <laughs> go. Hey, Cleveland. Speaking of Cleveland. <laughs> speaking of Cleveland, that's in Ohio. You know what else is in Ohio? Tom um, Dunn. Yes, but you know Tom. what else is in Ohio? Tom the Go Six. Therefore Conference. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, that's right. Coming up in the month of July is the Go There For Conference, and Kenny C., Vicky Joy, and myself will be there in attendance. And I can't tell you much else. Hey, Greg Reed's going to be back. Ellie Marzulli is going to be a part of this one. Mike Spaulding. Um, who else? Tendo. Sharon, Eric Gilbert. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Gilbert. Of course. Yeah, uh, go there Ebner. for conference 2023. 80 does that say 86 days and nine hours and 56 minutes? And 20, 19, yeah. 18. Every second it's getting closer. <laughs> Mike Spaulding, there you go. Dr. Michael yeah. Lake, I'm gonna be glad yes. to see him again. Oh, nice. uh, it's our annual meetup. Uh, uh, <laughs> Pastor Casper, uh, yes. he just sent me a text the other day. So, uh, Dr. Sherry Tenpenny, Coach Dave. I love her. Da yeah. David Hevener. Ooh, who's Dude, that guy? Ooh. That picture, the picture that won't die. <laughs> There's Tom Dunn. Of course, That's we Tom said Dunn's Gregory clone. Reed. Can you see? Kenny's a cartoon. Yeah. Uh, Kenny, Cause, uh, wait. Cause uh, cause uh, wait no, no. Wait, Randy Conway, David Paxton, and Vicki Joy Anderson. And uh, Nathan people. Barham. So, you know, I right. wish, I wonder if... Um, Maybe we can do this later. If you look at the actual card, I, you know, and he's got these little circles on it. And I feel like there's like a hierarchy there of like, because some people's pictures are bigger. Okay. And yeah. then some pe people are smaller. And then you have this order. And I think I'm on second row of the smaller people. So I'm moving up. Oh, not Dick, me. I'm, you're still am, on the bottom. I yeah. am bottom of the barrel, man. But you know somebody in the second row. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. well, it, the, the uh, actually the poster was completely made um, as in like uh, degrees of Kenny C. So people oh. that know me, oh. they have higher levels. It's like the Kevin Bacon thing. Gotcha. Yeah. So, Are you that which, you? hey, listen, <laughs> I'm keeping my fingers crossed. That LA is going to be there. That's all I'm going to say. I, I know. I'm so excited. I have been to three or four conferences that he has not been to. I know. know. I know. I figure Vicky's got the pull on this one. He's got to come. He's got to be there. I hope. I'm praying there's no family. Come on people. out, LA Marzuli to I'm Ohio. I'm excited yeah. about it. I have a name. You know what? I guess we saw him last year. We saw him last year in Dallas, right? Yeah. True. But yeah. yeah, that already feels like years ago. I know, doesn't it? That that shocked me when you just said that was last year. Yeah. So wow. crazy. Yeah. There we go. Okay, here we go. So you see this here. Um, oh yeah, and look how small your picture is, Vic. I know. Look, I'm squished, I'm bookended in between the patriarchy there. Yeah. <laughs> so well, you know what? I'm a cartoon. Small beginnings, yeah. That's true. I'm just excited. Kenny and I've been talking. 
there's at least four guitar players there that we know of. We're kind really? of for a little impromptu jam session there. That looks kind of like a bingo card. Like, you know, if you know somebody, you can like check it off. Like <laughs> Casper 13. Yeah. <laughs> Vicky yeah. Six. Oh, Vicky Six. Vicky Six. <laughs> that was pretty good. There. Oh, man. Hey, at least you could have. Sorry, I'm not going to say anything else. Let's just leave it at that. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> well, you know what I love about conferences is we get to eat these little things right here. Oh, my gosh. It's truffle. Man. Oh, it's the truffle. Yeah. So that, I'm yeah, rationing. So those things yeah. are, the, those are on point, man. I, I enjoyed those. I, I'm just going to eat mine right now. Whoa, Where's my, whoa. No, I don't have a water down here. Never mind. Oh, gluttony. Kenny C., you finally get a turn at picking a song. Well, I'm not even really drinking anything. I'm doing just, I see. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> swagging. I see what you're doing. Where where'd those mugs come from, man? Those are some hey, sweet man. looking mugs. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Hey, if if I, I I have to go get my through the black one that's bit got destroyed in the uh I yeah, the hey, too. I will bring you one. You know, we forgot I forgot I need to bring one. them at the last conference. So I have look, we even know in our household not to wash these things. Certain things have to go into it. And I when I pulled I saw it and I pulled it out and I was like Oh my gosh! And it just it melted. It was like yeah. You know, uh, well, to it. so hey, it's okay. I'll get another one. I I love. Yeah, yeah. It. We'll it get won. you. We'll get you hooked up, my friend. It, it truly went through the black. Yeah. Oh, no. And it survived, and it still got it. It holds coffee really well. Good. Just, you know, so it's, it's all good. good well, you know what? It's a one of a kind. Yeah. No, I've kept so, it. I won't throw it away, man. I was like, yeah. I'm not replacing it till I get my other one. So, which Can hey, you, only a couple months. This is an, uh, I think, maybe an obscure pick. Are there any fans of this band out there? I don't know, man. Dude, like, tell me about I it. Can, I, I will tell you here. So, listen, this is, I, I actually picked this song because I was think, looking at stuff and I had a list of things. And someone that was at the conference, your conference, uh, I met. Her name is Beth Wagner Martin. And uh, we talked at the conference and stuff. And then she started sending me things on different types of music. And she's like, have you ever seen the video for Zebra, Who's Behind the Door? And I was like, you know what? I don't think so. I knew they had another song that I recognized. Zebra only had one album, really, in 83. And that was it. So they're kind of, they're kind of obscure. But I went and watched the video. And I was like, okay, this has got some pretty neat stuff in it. The lyrics, what they're talking about. There's a lot of visual uh stuff going on in the video symbolism that we'll we'll get into and stuff like that but but it's a pretty cool song it kind of fits that whole um you know that it kind of fit rush and that progressive sound from that thing it's it's a little before the hair metal got really big um the guy's got a great voice man it's good stuff but what here's what's really interesting about zebra I've never seen them before. I know who the guys in the band are. Randy Jackson's the lead singer, guitar player, writes all the songs. But the three guys in that band are still alive and still playing. And they are doing like a 50th year year tour right now. And you can actually go see them. So I pulled up some stuff. was like, I think I want to go check these guys out. Because they're still (laughs) kicking it around and uh, doing this stuff. But but it's a very interesting song. So... um, Yep, there it is. It looks Zebra 2023 to tour date. For, I'm assuming that drummer wasn't always bald. 40, 40 years. I don't know. Let's look at when we watch the video. We'll see. Okay. I know that the singer, the singer's on the right, and the bass player's on the left. So okay. that's that's what's going on. And the drummer's the guy behind the drums. Yes. Gotcha. <laughs> Good. Okay. Good to know. But you know, it's kind of cool. The 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 singer's actually got. I remember him in guitar magazines and always being like, "Who is this?" Randy Jackson from Zebra. And of course, you know, there's another more famous Randy Jackson. There's about three of them, actually. He's there's a real a good bass Michael player, Jackson the brother. There's the the guy from uh, you know, Hey Dog from American <laughs> Idol, played with played with Journey. And you know, there's a whole lot of Randy Jacksons in the world, man. But there's only one Randy Conway, and oh. we are grateful for that. Yes. So just leave it at that. <laughs> We're grateful there's only one. <laughs> Just one. He's gonna write a poem about me now. I'm scared. Yeah. See him in July. Uh, so yeah, well, let's 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 look at this song a little bit. It's, it's okay, let's get into it. I have cool. not heard this song. I think I Good. read the lyrics. Awesome. But I have not heard the song. It's neat. Here we go. All right. Sweet. Thank you. 
Interesting. Wow. Yeah. But you know, it's and uh, let's let's just preface this with the fact that this is 1983. Right. So that's you know, for me, this is like when I just started really getting into rock music and playing guitar and stuff like this. So you know, the sound oh. fits in a lot of that progressive sound. You got all those up and kind of have this jangly sound with the synthesizers and stuff. But what I was really impressed with was watching was the symbolism right off the bat you're like okay we've got the black and white checkered thing we've got the floorboard there's a lot of stuff floating around in it that you're like what wow. so and then right off the bat you know the the lyrics are we sailed away we walked two thousand miles and then we slipped away uh we looked so hard but couldn't seem to find just what the world was for now we know just what the journey's for and he's making a statement there he's like okay we know what the journey's for, but the lyrics later into it, I question what his thought process is. Uh, it's kind of philosophical. Uh, I don't know if he's believing this is a biblical thing or not. If, as you get going into it, it starts to feel a little bit like there's a aspect of aliens and other types of stuff like that being possible. And you got to think this was 83. We're looking at, uh, you know, six years or so after, um, like close encounters. So there's a whole lot of, a lot of alien type stuff going on at that time period of thinking about stuff. So uh, I, I think that's just where he was coming with it for, you know, when he came out for it. So yeah. interesting. He says, yeah. now we know just what the journey's for. Yeah. I wonder if he reveals this in the song. Mm -hmm. So and, uh, I'm not going to say we'll yeah, find I out. Mean, you said 1983 is when this came out. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we're dealing, you know, obviously, there, there's some uh, um, short, you know, are, are, are some struggles back then production wise, you know, it was mm -hmm. a lot more expensive, I think. Well, maybe I don't I don't know if it was more expensive or not. Um, when you're dealing with film, you know, making videos back then, I guess the first thing I noticed production wise about the video it is better than don't go to the supermarket. <laughs> so. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh yeah so oh well so i love how kenny's got the music and then tom sees the film and the cinematic features so the lyric that popped out at me was that we've walked two thousand miles and slipped away so i don't know if miles is an analogy for years but Ooh. two thousand yeah, that's what i thought too two thousand years ago is sort of the generic time block we give for when jesus walked the earth in the in that's the, right so it's interesting with the whole alien theme we're 2,000 miles away down the road from this Jesus character but now we finally know what it was really about because he didn't yeah. have it. just a thought yeah no, I, no, I, I, I thought that too there, yeah and also too it, it it starts right off with we sailed away and and then we walked 2,000 miles and then we slipped away so you're, it, there's a whole lot of stuff right there to unpack, you know, and you got to think about, I think about other bands at that time period, like Styx, Come Sail Away. That song is basically about, you know, we thought they were angels and they're, they're, they, you, they're basically talking about spacemen coming to them. And so this was kind this wasn't a huge jump. Everybody was kind of getting on board with that. I think the thing with this video though, is that they're showing um, a lot of stuff that was they're showing Nixon, they're showing the classic the execution stuff, they're showing a lot of things that were in the world that are not great, and then they're kind of like, What's going on? The world is a you know, it's terrible, we're having this stuff, so it kind of un unfolds as the video goes. Well, 
think about how upset people were politically 50 years ago or 40 plus years ago. People were just bent out of shape, right? Just like they are now. So what's new, really? You know? Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Isn't that interesting? I mean, we think that our it problems is. are worse. And in some ways they are. But, um, you know, they, they have this uh, this uh, kind of B-roll footage rolling of the president. Mm -hmm. And obviously they're making a statement like, look at this mess, you know? And if this was made in modern days, obviously... Uh, you know, we would have Obama, right. we would have um, Trump, Trump we'd have and, all, yeah, yeah right. and whoever's in there now, Biden. But, um, so honestly, you think about it, there's a neat, there's a symbolism of, of archetypes. We're still these same, the same people, they're, they're the same kind of things, and what we look, they're symbolism, but it hasn't changed that much. We still have the same issues and all the same problems that are going on. What you know. Well, and you mentioned sticks. I I was actually thinking of that in that first line. Yep. Okay. Uh, come sail talking. away. Yep. Um, and then as I'm thinking of the of the president, and you know nothing ever changes. I think of the song "The Grand Illusion" by Sticks. Oh yeah. Which is about, um, you know, kind of what that was, what was going on there visually. Um, yeah. It's just a different leader. It's the same. It's the same thing. You know. Yeah. And, and Sticks was revealing something that uh, people today haven't even figured out, that it's a two-party system, you know, at least here in America. And, uh, you know, there's plenty of some, you know, similar, you know, systems around the world. We are led to believe that we have a choice. We don't have a choice. Okay. Yeah, very true. And Dennis DeYoung also was a prophet and let us know that it was Kilroy. Yes. So, so you know. Kilroy was here. That's that's right. Interesting. Interesting to the, I think the little play on words with um, ship, especially back in the eighties, maybe before the eighties, because like Kenny said, ET and close encounters and stuff. Close encounters, right, right. But um, you know, when we say when we use metaphors like ship and sail, most of us intrinsically think of a sea, a sea bearing vessel, but ship, spaceship. So a lot of these ship. Right songs um if you really dig into it that kind of might be uh an occult blind there that they're using mm. yeah that's that's good that's i good. want to hear more let's get in me too let's do it here we go zebra who's behind the door did we say that yet yes okay. no <laughs> uh-oh no audio no audio. We might have to. Anyway, technical difficulties here. Um, you know, I remember seeing this album out in the stores, you know, and I, and seeing, mm -hmm. you know, even the logo of Zebra. Here we go. Let's try it again. I wonder what this thing is coming in in the sky here. Yeah. Okay, now I remember reading these lyrics last week when you told me about it. Yeah, um, this is like yeah. this is turning into an episode of Twilight Zone. So. <laughs> it really is. It really is. So when you listen, because I mean, they're saying looking out to the stars, mm -hmm. think about what you are, and then they drop in the what do they think of you, animals in their zoo, and that's a you know, there's a lot of people that who believe in that kind of thing, almost like a panspermia type thing we've been seeded by the stars we brought aliens have made this i mean ancient aliens has made a career on this for how many years now Dude, I mean, golly man it's crazy do you remember that episode of the twilight zone where this uh this couple wakes up in a um in this town and they don't know where they're at mm. and they keep hearing this little girl laughing and they're like, and they're walking around and they're looking and they're like, we don't know where we're at. And, you know, yeah. long story short, they ended up getting um, uh, abducted by aliens and taken to their planet and dropped off in their little girl's play set. Like yeah. This, the dogs. yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's good. That's good. You know, it, it's funny in the last like five, 10 years, 
it seems now like with YouTube and everything, everyone now is talking about the book of Enoch and the stars and the, the heavenly host and the demonic realm and, sure. and aliens and all the symbology and the checkerboard floors. But this is what, 83? 83. This, was, this was under our nose for decades before anybody yeah. noticed yeah. talking about it. Um, years ago, when I first started going down all these rabbit holes, uh, man, I remember one day I, uh, like the power went out at work or something. They sent everybody home. So I came home and I was watching conspiracy videos and I came across this video about the Jacksons. Can you feel it? And oh. somebody broke down image by image, line by line, all of this uh, Masonic stuff. And I'm like, what? This is crazy. Yeah. And it was like, okay, what is happening here? Did the Jacksons really know this much? Was it the video maker? Was it, you know, what was happening? But I just mentioned that because that's a song from that era that had mm -hmm. imagery in it. Yeah. And here we have another one. And you wonder, it, it seems as though the um the band you know is behind you know uh you know a lot of this imagery because it goes along with the lyrics right there, there's a right yep. there's something happening here but um mm -hmm. what do they yeah, say we like, are pets in their animals in their zoo yeah but see you yeah. wonder about that with like you're talking about with the jacksons and stuff i mean how, how much control did they really have on it they really didn't write i mean their songs michael as he got older was writing a lot of the material but i don't know about back that time period so you know they could they could squeeze anything in on that stuff man yeah no that's a good point that's a good point but i do yeah. believe these guys do these guys are writing the song and the lyrics fit the imagery and stuff's going on to it you just don't the thing is you don't know if that somebody comes along and goes hey man i'm reading, reading uh you know some uh some whatever some cool conspiracy stuff let's put some black and white checkerboards on the floor and let's just let's just take go to the next thing because there's a lot more in it too as you'll see when it comes up there's mm -hmm. there's way more sim symbology all right let's go yeah let's look at some more zebra who's behind the door look at this computer You can definitely tell the bass player and the lead singer, like they look exactly the same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah, the vibe. They're the stringed instrument guys. Mm -hmm. So here we have another UFO type imagery. Landing is not on their minds. Their minds. Well, it might not have been in 83. But now I'm interested what you guys think. All of a sudden now, the very last two lines, how do we have the nerve? We're animals in preserve. It sounds like, I don't know if it's still Randy Jackson singing or if it's another voice, but all of a sudden it's kind of this higher voice register. It is. It's a, He's the same guy. It's, he does okay. that. He has that register high. Okay. Register. I'm wondering why those two lines were sung in more of sort of a... Falsetto? Yeah. Uh, I, I wonder... Because it draws attention to those two lines. Um, yeah, I mean, you. Well, I mean, you think of those four lines right there. They haven't got the time. Landing's not on their mind. It's almost like they're saying we were put here and left here, and they're not really paying attention to anything. We just kind of got. We were just kind of created. This does remind me of Pam Spermia, the Alien yeah, Gospel. Exactly. Speaking of L.A. Marzulli. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's exactly what I think with it, and but but you got to think in '83 that wasn't as much of a. I don't remember thinking hearing of that kind of stuff until later. But also, yeah. I was you know, I was a kid. Well, this yeah. would have went way over most people's head back then. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. That's what. So I, who would they have had to have been reading or watching? Because you can't get this. I don't think from a sci-fi movie. They had to have been reading somebody who was around yeah. back then talking about mm -hmm. this. Zachariah Stitchin, somebody like that. Mm -hmm. I don't he know, around? man. When did he start writing? 
Stitching, I don't, I stitching, I felt like was maybe later 80s. Okay. What about rap, Robert Anton Wilson, man? A lot of the Luminatus trilogy, a lot of that ass. Okay, was well, that guy, stuff. that guy was a Satanist, wasn't he? Or a cultist? He was pretty, he pretty occultic stuff, man. I, yeah, I've read, read a lot of his stuff years ago, man. But that kind of stuff falls into it, you know. But 83, you know, I mean, we still, I still think about as a kid. I remember scholastic book fairs and you would have these little books on Bigfoot and, and the Loch Ness monster and the Yeti. And they were, and they were starting to pull in the whole, the alien stuff too. So there was, you know, mm -hmm. even at that age, you were learning about grays, 81's ET. So, you know, we're kind of yeah. getting that stuff. I got a scholastic, I got a scholastic book about ESP. Loved that book. Yep. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, Kenny, I was going to bring up ET as well. 81. Yep. If you talk to like our parents and our grandparents, the yep. mo the movies about alien invasions that they were exposed to were like War of the Worlds, Takeover, they're they're coming to eat us, you know, Twilight Zone, right. like That's the, right. the cookbook episode and all that. 81, yep. all of a sudden now we have an alien coming from another planet that we are forced to empathize with. He's friendly. He's our friend. He's attracted to children and he does no harm to them. And, you know, yeah. so we're already seeing a shift in 81 now from aliens having to be wicked, evil, you sure. know, sure. Fingers to where, right, right. where your friends. And it, of course, it goes all the way down the gamut then with like, oh, short yeah. And Plan, all that stuff. yeah, you go back, Plan 9 from Outer Space. All the, the creatures and stuff like the blob and things were always these, you know, we're, they're they're going to kill us. Invasions of the body snatchers. You know, that was like took over the body. I mean, there's a whole lot of that. Dude. And then all of a sudden, you're right. All of a sudden, it was like, I'm even triggered. even with Close Encounters, it was, hey, we're going to have these aliens playing music tones. Ba -da 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 -da. And, you know, it kind of, the scary factor went out. E.T. became this big thing of us. Awesome. Now, I got to tell you something. When you brought up E.T. just now, I saw an article this week. I wish I'd saved it. I'm pretty sure it was the actor, Javier Bardem. I don't know if you know him. He was in, a, he's, he's, uh, I'm trying to think what's of it. No Country, no for, country old for Old Men. That's him. There's an article out right now, Katie may be able to find it, where he <laughs> describes the fact that he was attracted to E.T. That was his first crush. Weird. Dude, I'm not kidding you. I read an article time. about it, and I looked at it, and I went, that can't be. He didn't mean that. And then he's like, oh, man, I had, I had a crush on E.T. I'm thinking... Why would you tell people that? <laughs> if aliens are real, I hope they're like lizard people, dude. Because I will, I will. Well, okay. Now, now you're talking also. It's like eighty-three. You're talking a little bit later than that. You're getting like the the V series where yeah. you know, where they had the alien and they eat the, the, the guinea pigs. Yeah, man, that was some, that was some, dude. That was Robert. Do you guys Andrew, remember man. that birth? Yeah. Of oh, that? I will, I will oh my god! That. Man, you don't. That was that. must see TV. Oh, You're talking yeah. about traumatizing. Yeah. Man. So, I mean, hey, I was excited to see it, but that oh, was on man. prime time television. That's Everybody fine. was like, what's going to happen? Yeah. And you think about it. They did the whole thing with that, that you know, the, the leader was this beautiful brunette. You know, when he pulled her face off that one time, you're like, ah, there's there are all these reptilian creatures. Yeah, that you messes know? you up, dude, psychologically and emotionally, especially if you're going through puberty at that time, right? <laughs> Yeah. Hey, and you know what? They re they re there it is right there. Oh my gosh, Katie, you're the best. Yes, there it is. I saw that and was like, I skipped over it and was like, oh my gosh. Childhood celebrity crush. That's things you just don't tell people unless there's a purpose for that. Oh hey kids, God. it's okay to love an alien that looks like a worm creature with big eyes. I don't know, man. It's oh just, yeah. I don't know. Uh, Javier Bardem kind of looks a little bit like E.T., man, especially that haircut he had in No Country for Old Men. Well, what, what's interesting about V and They Live is yeah. now the commentary is changing to the aliens have lived among us all this oh, time yeah. and just like us. And uh, that was terrifying. 
to think that, oh man, this person that I married or this person I work for, it could be one of them. Oh my gosh. You need the magic sunglasses to tell who's who. Wow. Yeah. It will. I, I think there's yes. a lot of predictive programming in that. I think it when, is too. When they remade that series about 10 years ago, the, there was some yeah. things going on yeah. that they kind of incorporated into the show. I can't really talk. We can't talk about it here. Okay, because we can't, we're not even allowed to get close to this uh, to this topic. But there were messages, obviously predictive programming messages going out on that show. And when you watch the old V series, they had trauma based mind control that they oh, were yeah. doing to the humans. Yeah. They were doing yeah. this on the show. Crazy. Right crazy yeah they were showing it being yeah they were showing that it was definitely predictive man you see it now i mean i have all that stuff on dvd man and every once in a while you pull them out and look it's crazy but the remake in 2009 i mean you're talking 14 years ago uh -huh. uh, you know, it, it it they got they actually want a little more we can't i really we can't talk about some of the stuff that was yeah bad. right yeah. you're right so, so we'll anyway from zebra to v you know that's it. Zebra. That's stuff, speaking man. of zebra, I heard there's a story about a zebra biting a guy's arm off here in Ohio somewhere. What? So <laughs> zebras, if that's a true wow. story, they're a little bit more vicious than you might assume. Wow. So anyway. Okay. I don't know. Maybe Katie. Hey, guys. Let's name our band that. something very vicious like zebra. Yeah, I want giraffe. Oh, oh. That's right. All right. Hey, can, can we name our band uh, uh, slightly hearing impaired hippopotamus? That would be great. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Def leopard. Okay. Right. Oh, there you go. Keep going. All right. Sorry. Here we right. go. More. More zebra. <laughs> So this was ahead of its time. Oh, it is. Yeah. No, absolutely. That's why I said when it was brought to my attention, I was like, this is good. This is perfect for audio topsy. It's got some great yeah. stuff in it. See, he's telling the stories going along, and then they're saying, now we're at we're, as, we're animals in a zoo. They're watching this all. They're just making sure we don't trip and fall. They look so hard, but can't tell us why they're here and just what for. Because they don't know who opened up the door. That's crazy, man. You're looking at it, you're like, oh, okay, hey, we think aliens did it, but guess what? They don't know either. So there's a speculation of there's definitely something else that's created all this. They're just not being uh, as obvious as we would be. So we know the answer. Hi, we know the answer, Zebra. You know, <laughs> how far? Give me a call. <laughs> how crazy is it to have a belief like this? Like, when you take a when you compare it to something like Islam, because when you look back at Islam, they believe that the white race is an experiment gone wrong. Have you guys ever heard that? Mm. Yeah, I have. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is kind I of think I mean, that's an interesting, you know, theory that moves into a lot of the um, theology, like the nation of Islam type. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're kind of yeah. they definitely do. There's a whole yeah, there's a super racial aspect to that. Right, right. Well, and then, you know, just um, he's asking the question in this song, like, who opened up the door? Who who did this? Who put us here? And going back to the idea of panspermia, yep. um, which for anybody that doesn't know, it's the belief that we were seated here by an alien race. Um, uh, and I'm thinking of uh, the movie Prometheus. Uh, yeah, have you guys yeah. Seen that movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that ties into all the alien movies, right? 
Um, yeah, I don't. I'd, I'd say most people probably at this point have heard something about panspermia. It's kind of it's pretty common knowledge at this point. What goes on, especially with as much as ancient aliens, man. It's well, just, you know, they've they've laid that the they've laid that out for fifteen years now. I mean, every episode's basically that. They're gonna. Isn't it crazy the that person. the ancient aliens show is on the History Channel, as if it's fact? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. yeah. That's that. Yeah. That. Yeah, after a while you think about it, man. I I I don't know, man. I I always I think about how much I've been accustomed to watching things like that growing up. So, it's going to influence you and I feel like really I feel really blessed to be at a place in my life where I know the truth. I know the truth with, with Jesus and the Bible and that knowing that keeps me from all this stuff doesn't fall into my view it doesn't create my theology doesn't do anything with that but you can see that a lot of the stuff i mean right now we live in a world where most people don't even read anymore they watch videos and it's quick cut 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 you know so this time period of this is very different man this was a long form video people would actually sit and watch a whole video on tv this wasn't on their computers it wasn't on thing you had to watch a show and watch a whole video to get that stuff so I, you know, we, so, we live in such a different time now. Kenny, this has got me wondering again, watching this video yeah. and trying to just kind of deconstruct is who's the lyric writer in this band, you know, right, and you wonder if they all three believed it because it seems like they're all on board or they're just yeah. making a video and the other two don't know what's going on. <laughs> but like Steven you, Adler, you wonder what kind of environment that they grew up in. Oh because yeah, are, is this an American band? They are. Yeah. They are. Okay. So and they're kind of like they're band. One of them, I think, two of them uh, are based out of New Orleans, so they're in that okay. area. And then another one's like from New York, so they kind of have like two home bases that people kind of know them from, and they still play in those areas and stuff. So. I mean, New Orleans is not too far from the Bible Belt, so to have. Either they're rebelling from their roots, mm -hmm. from their upbringing in church. Um, you know, uh, it goes back. I think the first episode we did was Over the Mountain by Ozzy Osbourne. And there's some interesting things similar to what we're talking about here in that song. It's like, where do you, how do you start there? You know, or how did you, how did you get to that point to where this is what you're writing about? This is what you believe. Right, right. Um, there's got to be a story. I mean, did they leave home and just start reading a book and be like, yeah, this is it. This is it. I, I reject, you know, this view over here. This is too hard for me to grasp this, uh, the Christian God and Jesus and the gospel sure. or, you know, I, and who knows, maybe they didn't have any, that didn't have any kind of influence in their life whatsoever. I'm just assuming because 50 years ago, it was more prevalent, obviously, than it is now. So I, I don't know. I just um, I'm thinking about well, this. What I will say, what kind of home did they grow up in? Yeah, I, I will say this. I've written songs, lots of songs on different things, and sometimes I would just write songs that were stupid. This had a cool, I you know, crazy idea. When I was a young kid, I I mean, I wrote I wrote a song that actually got some play on some stuff, and it was basically during my. Um, I like to smoke a lot of pot days when the, my early musician days. So, you know, I wrote a song about aliens bringing marijuana to earth and it was a real <laughs> song. I still have it. So, but I'm just saying that where does that come from? Yeah. Actually, one of my big, one of my biggest songs ever was a song about a kid riding a huffy bike and it got on all kinds of huffy. who writes stuff like that. I did. That was me. <laughs> You now know, I write now. I write songs about Jesus and God. It's crazy, yeah. man. That dude's nuts. Seriously. When I would have to write stories or creative writing type stuff for school, I was influenced by Star Trek. I was influenced mm -hmm. by absolutely. cartoons like Dungeons and Dragons cartoons. Yep. And oh, absolutely, man. Stuff like that. Dude, I, I love I the idea of Dungeons and Dragons. If you if you remember that cartoon. That. These guys yeah. were minding their own business and they slipped into another dimension. And I'm like, oh, dude, yeah. that's a good idea. So I would yeah. try to do stuff like that. But I I wrote a song around 91. It was on a CD and it was basically the premise was the Star Trek Enterprise came and beamed up my band <laughs> to the ship. And we were playing for the 
for Kirk, the original, not not these ladies. Not I mean, Picard. The, the original TOS. I mean, we're talking Kirk, Spock, yeah. that stuff. I did a whole story about it, and uh, it's a pretty good song, man. So I'm gonna say I'll have to, I'll bring it out sometime. What okay, yeah, hear? yeah, awesome. So I what, what's the name of that song? Enterprise. Enterprise. Oh, okay. It really it is. Yeah. Hey, you know what the hook is? We were jamming on the Starship Enterprise. That's the hook. <laughs> oh, nice. So the the lyric in that last um, section that we listened to that was intriguing to me is they so they you know we've established they right. they, they don't know who opened the door and I am I'm thinking they probably do I, I think they probably don't like who opened the door um, and in in some ways they had their own role in that I mean they rebelled they left their first estate they they. They, they left their first estate, but by way of this concept, if we're going to look at this as, as there's a door that someone is opening or shutting, uh, the scriptures have plenty to say about that. So I just want to read a couple verses where the Bible very clearly speaks about who opened the door and who has the keys. Yep. Uh, Isaiah 22, 22, then I will set the key of the house of David on his shoulder. Mm -hmm. When he opens, no one will shut. When he shuts, no one will open. Revelation 9, 1, then the fifth angel sounded and I saw a star from heaven which had fallen to the earth and the key of the bottomless pit was given to him. Uh, Matthew 16, 19, he's talking to the saints now. Jesus says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Uh, this is three of many. Uh, there, there's also a blatant verse where Jesus declares outright, I am the door. the door. So the, the right. Bible is pretty clear. If anyone doesn't know who opened the door, a very cursory glance at scripture will tell you hundreds of mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's good. That's good stuff. That's right. Preach it, sister. Very good. All right. We got, do we have any more of this? I want to see. Yeah, there happens. is. There's some more. There's, there's okay. lots more. This is getting exciting. There's a little bit more. They're going, he's going towards the door here. Yeah. I'm um, thinking of so many sci-fi movies. I'm telling you, man, you can't see that. And not think about the Shining. There's like, yeah, the pointing aspect. There's a whole lot of stuff that somebody was just like, I'm gonna throw this in here. So, but you notice they said, he said, who owns the keyless door? I know. No, that changes the aspect of it real quickly. You're like, wait a minute, what's he? You know, he's no. he's specifying more as it gets going down through here. Unless it's a gate, unless a, dim a dimensional portal would be a keyless door, I Listen guess. Listen to these lyrics. Yep. Yeah. Um, here. Un unwatched men. That makes me think of the watchers because who's yep. watching? They're, that's they're who watches. Yeah, that's right. Where does the cycle end? Now you're getting the stuff that could possibly be about reincarnation. They're thinking about it more of a, uh, not just, you know, as a Christian aspect in terms of like Hinduism and things like that. That's kind yes. of a. Yep. Dude. Time loops, quantum stuff. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, yeah there's, there's some stuff more. going on here. Mm -hmm. yeah. And oh. I bet like the keyless door, somebody out there, and I want to know if the listeners know if there's any sci-fi writer, or if there's any kind of um oh yeah, you know, philosophical writer who talked about the keyless door. There's got to be somebody out there. These guys, mm -hmm. I think, are referencing somebody that we're not. Familiar I do with. too. You're probably right. Yeah, that's right. yeah, that's a good good question. Somebody look that up. Where? Okay. Um. Well, anyway, where it does this more. cycle more end? Lyrics yeah, still. I was gonna read. Yeah, we'll go more. Yeah, let's go to the next one. Okay. Here we go. Zebra. <laughs> Man-eating zebra. Okay. <laughs> I hope they don't call me soon. Call me soon. Hmm. 
So now, wait a minute. He goes, there but seems he, to be but a he, fear. But he, but he, yeah, yeah, if, he if actually you're... says, where do we go from here? Faith is a fading fear. That's the line. That, Faith you is know a what? Fading fear. Yeah. That's some sick, twisted poetry right there. Yeah. I don't <laughs> understand. If, if your fear is fading, then who cares if they call you up soon? Yeah. What are you afraid I think of? I think that's more about an aspect of people who really who I mean if you're not a Christian it's not gonna mean this stuff. People people think about, you know, uh, I, mean, I can only look at it in my own specs and stuff where I've had things where I've been very close to death and people are like, You're not scared. And I'm like, No, because I know where I'm going and I'm not I'm okay with that. If that's what I don't know my time, I don't know what God's plan is for that, but when you read, most people are kind of, you know, they're very, they're scared of dying. They're like, they don't want to die. So you feel like he's going, okay, he's not completely scared and faith is a fading fear. And he's kind of like, I'm not totally scared. And I feel like and it says his life is a waiting room. It's like there, you've been put here, but you know, to me, I think that's a little bit, I, I don't know if it's just a, his so verbiage for this, I hope they don't call this very obscure band. Yeah, they've got some very interesting um, keywords mm -hmm. here: keyless door, unwatched men. Yeah. Okay. Uh, faith is a fading fear. Yeah. Life is a waiting room. Yeah. I hope they don't call me soon. Yeah. That crazy? Very fascinating. Very fascinating. Who's who's behind the door? Um. <sighs> So I have a theory and it's just a theory, but we all know now, like we didn't know this in the past, but we all know now that like a lot of these bands, they hire studio musicians to, to do the actual recordings. Cause like time is money. And a lot sure. of these guys are flaky and don't show up on time. And so we, we know that. So to, to think that these guys are living the rock style life, you know, and coming up with profound, profoundly philosophical <coughs> deeply religious and spiritual lyrics sometimes for me is a stretch and i don't want to stereotype because there are a lot of extremely intelligent you know philosophical musicians right we do have creative minds and stuff but just from what i know about literary figures so i'm not talking about musicians now i'm talking about literary figures people who are famous for you know i'm talking like bomb like frank bomb and H.P. Lovecraft and Edgar Allan Poe and Helena Blavatsky, all these people, they will be the first to tell you, I got all of this from dreams. I right. got all from astral projection. I was smoking pot. I was dropping acid. Sure. Uh, the guy who wrote Jekyll and Hyde, the whole entire thing was a dream he had. And mm -hmm. um, so I think that a lot of these musicians might legitimately be the authors of the lyrics they are sitting down and they are writing it but um like um a nesbitt who was an influence on c.s lewis she was a children's author in england who predated lewis um blavatsky they did automatic writing where they were channeling uh -huh. and they were writing and it might have been under the influence of a drug maybe not it might have been astral so it's not that these guys aren't writing these lyrics but it doesn't mean that they're not being used in some way and they're not channeling these lyrics. Even the prophets, there were prophets in scripture that said they did not know what they were writing at the time. Um, Daniel, Peter, sure. what did the vision mean? I don't even know. And so I do think that human beings are highly susceptible to being channels. And so it's not that I'm accusing these people of not really writing their lyrics, but I'm thinking that in a lot of cases, they're getting a lot of help and they're writing something down and going, that's awesome. Oh, that sounds so cool. Oh, it even rhymes. But if you really ask them, what does this really mean? They might not be able to tell you. Right. Right. And, and I will say this also too, man, with uh, the fact that if they were, they were getting help and they wrote this amazing song with all these great lyrics and stuff, they got a bad deal because nobody knows this song or the band. So to me, it's kind of like, but I also look at it like this. What if it's opposite of that? What if this was something that's supposed to be unveiled at a later time? That could, you just, we just don't know what's going on with it because there's a couple more lines that kind of talks in and stuff, but it's interesting to look into the background of the band and they're kind of, you know, they were just kind of a, 
they were a bar band, man, playing three sets a night, doing that kind of stuff and got kind of in a place and ended up getting a song and hit and got onto a record label. I mean, it's, so Kenny, they're hitting the road again after 50 years. Yeah. Again, I'm asking, I wonder what has happened in their lives since they wrote these lyrics, recorded this song, made this video. I wonder if they've had any changes in beliefs. Hmm. I, I wonder if anybody has encountered Christ. Somebody, yep. one of these guys had to have had, I mean, yep. they have not necessarily, you know, depending on where they're looking at, but they had to brush up against truth, you know, yes. in the last 50 years, that's 150 years combined. Okay. That oh. somebody had a chance to give them truth. Right. So it makes you wonder, um, just where are they at now in comparison when they were putting out this message 50? Well, I guess the, 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 the band's 50 years old, but the song is not. So, well, what's interesting, the thing about it is this song came out in 83, and there's a little bit of history on the band and talking about stuff in 82 uh, when they were playing. It was like, you know, they part of their history is they played a lot of clubs and stuff, but the night they got signed, they were playing a St. Christopher's Catholic youth dance in New Orleans in an old gym for the school. And that's and they got signed from that gig with where teenagers were there. And it was just an old gig in, a, perfect, in an old nice. church gym. And they got and then they got signed to Atlantic Records, which was the home of Led Zeppelin. I mean, you're, dude, it's nineteen eighty two. You're gonna get a record deal with Atlantic that was as big as it got back then. And you know, you're and they kind of have that vibe too. So uh, it was a pretty big deal. And to me it's interesting that they got this big deal and they made the record and nobody still knows who they are yeah. or the song. So wh what was the deal? Why did they get this big bump? I mean, cause they got an Atlantic records deal. That's huge. That was yeah. huge at that time period. But so to see how they got into that, you know, they were just playing clubs and, you know, gyms. I mean, that, that think about it. We're playing, we're playing at, at an old St. Pat, a Catholic school gym. And that's where they got signed. That's crazy <laughs> stuff. I mean, man. It's crazy. I, I'm not trying to Weird. cut on the band, but mm -hmm. bands like this had to be a dime a dozen. So yeah, I, why did I, they no, get I, Yeah, I agree. I think that the lead singer had something that fit a kind of demographic they like. And if you go back over the last 40 years, he's still been very prolific, just not with this band. He's done a lot of, he goes and sings in a lot of big orchestral stuff. He'll, there'll be always, somebody's always doing a night of Led Zeppelin and they have the full orchestra but they need somebody to sing it. And Randy Jackson from Zebra gets a lot of gigs and he does that all over the world. He goes mm. and plays for a lot of different ones because he can see, he can sing a little bit like Robert Plant. So he, he's made a living at it. It's kind of neat. I, when I saw they were still playing out, I was like, I'm going to try to, I want to catch them somewhere on here. Cause I'd love to, talk I to hope. Them. I'd love to be like, Hey man, tell me about this song. We talked yeah, about then, it on the show. Give I me hope this somebody, tool somewhere somehow has gotten to these guys with the mm -hmm. gospel or they brushed up against Absolutely. the gospel and encountered it in some way it's gonna be me so i'm gonna run into him at that gig we're gonna sweet. talk guitars and then jesus will get i'll throw it in there <laughs> we got more yeah. we got more of this song i think there's a outro yeah, yeah. it is Hey, I will say this. I when I heard this song, I was so impressed with the fact that he held a note for like thirty seconds. I was, I like, know, wow. He hits that door note and he doesn't let off of it, and it just kind of flades through. And I was like, okay, that's impressive. That's impressive in itself. But you know, so you know. Kenny, had you yeah. listened to this band before? Or this is a, a listener brought this to you. Somebody, hey, honestly, it was somebody I talked to at the con at in April, and um. Out of the darkness, and uh, we just over breakfast, they were talking about some stuff. We got to talk about, it, and then they sent me a message. They said, "You know, I love the audio topics show. Have you ever thought about doing this song?" And I was like, "I remember the band. I remember they had 
I didn't remember this song as much as their other one. Yeah. And my brain, so it's, what's you know, the name of the what person that suggested maybe. this? The person, Beth, uh, Beth Martin. Maybe? Shout Beth out Wagner to Beth. Martin. I know. That's what I told her. I, I, I actually, I sent her a thing last week when uh, we were talking about doing it. I sent her a thing that said, we're doing the first show on it. She's like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So she's like, cool. send it to me. She thought I was sending her a copy of the show early. And I was like, we haven't recorded it yet. It's coming. Oh. <laughs> coming. But, but yeah, big shout out to Beth, man. That was a great, it's a great song. And it just, it lent itself to something that, None of us had really, I didn't know the song that well. And so to me, it was really interesting. There's a lot, the lyric content, but even not even that, just that, just the, the visuals, man. We're seeing all this black and white checkerboards and the twinning thing. And she kind of brought that up. And I was like, yeah, we need to talk about this. This is, this has got some good stuff in it. No kidding. No kidding. Wow. Well, um, I think it's fascinating. And, the most fascinating thing for me is the time that it came out. Okay. Because nobody was really doing this like this back then. I mean, I mean, this is, uh, this is, uh, like the sequel to come sail away. Right. Or something like it that. It is. Yeah. Did you catch the last line though? The, what he, what he said, how much more do you really think, you know, yeah, than, than a, a flower. flower does about who's behind the door. It's like, all of a sudden it's like, you are insignificant in this situation. And, and I went, wait a minute, you know, and that's a guy. And right there, it kind of, to me, it changed a little bit of everything on the aspect. Cause I think you have to look at it. You know, God knows he's, he, he knows our, the number of the, of our, the hairs on our head and the sand, all these things. And I look at that and go, he, right at the end of this, he goes, how much, how much more do you really think you know than a flower knows? Well, this reminds me kind of, of this, um, Oh, who's got this argument? It's not Dawkins or maybe it's Hitchens, this atheist saying that we are just stardust, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. what's the difference between yeah. you and a flower? And that philosophy, yeah, um, is uh, you know, is a big problem because yeah. people that believe that that there's no difference between a human and a flower. They have no problem cutting humans down just like you do a flower. So mm -hmm. and, and yeah. We're, yeah. we're seeing that. Think of that forward, right, uh, in terms of uh, life, of life in the womb, of abortion and things like that. What, what do you think you know more? You're, you're no better than a flower. Mm. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. And, you know, I'm thinking of the verse in Romans that says, who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? who has ever given to God that God should repay him for from him and through him and to him are all things to him be the glory. So yeah, we will never know the full mind of God, even in heaven. I hope not. I hope I never come to the end of it. Well, but, but it also says in John that you now know my master's business. I no longer call you servants, but friends, everything the father has made known to me, I make known to you. So we do know more than that flower. Yeah. It makes me also think of Job. And a song mm. by the band Tourniquet, Theocracy on Trial, where it's it, that song is the story of Job, okay? Yeah. And uh, God comes in at the end and he's like, where were you when I did all this stuff? Okay, yeah. where right. were you um, uh, when, when I was creating, you know, the universe and all this? And yeah, anyway, yeah. 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 That would be a good song to cover sometime. Might be oh, too, yeah. too hot. I was just I was just reading in Job my Bible, just my own studies, and I, there's a there's a great there's a great part of there when Job's basically like putting God on trial, and you're and you're you're reading it, and you're going, oh my gosh, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, what? he's like saying all these things, like I am so you know look how i'm so amazing and he's you're basically watching him just on and he's and he's basically saying to god hey man listen if i'm wrong about it you can just kill me it's like get yeah. the death sentence and you're reading it you're going dude you're in trouble yeah you're totally you're totally you're you're you're, you're done isn't it's a great, god's it's a, word so amazing it, i'm always like oh how did he not know and, and right it's such a great thing when so. you can read the bible and then you're like, ah, oh, dude, I'm embarrassed for the person that's going on. Yeah. Of course, we know the whole story, yeah. but you're like, oh, I just want to shrink. Like, oh, yeah. don't do this or this is. Yeah, um, yeah I spent some time on it the other day because it made me think about it, how people think about how righteous they are. 
yeah. but God, I'm do I'm this and I'm all this, and you know, I'm dude. so much better than that person. Yeah, you're like, hey, dude, God can see your inner heart, man. <laughs> he knows what's going on. You, we're you we're going to get to heaven, heaven, and we're going to realize that everybody has the book of their life, you know, written down. The book of Kenny C, the book of, Tom. and we're going to see Paul and Adam and Eve reading our books, going like, man. Oh, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah dude. <laughs> Chapter thirteen, the book of Kenny C. Nobody wants to see that. <laughs> Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Hey, folks. Um, we told you what we think about Zebra mm -hmm. and the song Who's Behind the Door. We want to know what you think. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Uh, do you like Kenny? Do you not like Kenny? I don't want, no, don't <laughs> cut the comments off. No, Tom, so, don't hey, do uh, what do you think? Uh, hey, if you love the show, tell us. We want to know. We appreciate it. Um, we're going to keep doing it no matter what. It's uh, it's a, Hey, this show made the cut, right? We've cut off a couple shows uh, this season, but we're just uh, – we're scaling it back a little bit. Uh, all, you know, we're, we're going to change from season to season. But, uh, hey, if you're trying to figure out – if you're watching through the black and you're trying to figure out where was the show at on Wednesday night, it was on Rumble. You got to go to Rumble. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, uh, and you can go to throughtheblack.com, by the way, and you can find links, direct links to everything, uh, all of the shows, everything that we do, the podcast that we're connected with, uh, stuff like that. We're going to tell you more about. But, uh, folks, yes, uh, week one down, and we're going to be back next week. Well, actually, I'm going to be back on Monday with Colleen. We're switching it up a little bit. But Vicky Joy and I will be back Tuesday and Wednesday, and we're gonna have another audio topsy for you next week. So, oh yeah, and Kenny, Kenny's gonna be there as well. So I made uh, the cut. Hey everybody, I made the cut. Yeah, Kenny made the cut. Uh, actually, Kenny, we just forced him. We're like, hey, uh, you're not leaving, okay? Yeah, so he, he was like, okay, guys, can I be done now? Not yeah. really. Just, yeah. Nope. I love I love this show, man. You guys are great. So, um, pet zebra nearly bites Ohio man's <laughs> arm off. Okay, animal fatally shot. Authorities say so. Is this this is wow. USA Today, folks? Who's got a wow. pet zebra? zebra. I mean, Michael what kind of teeth does a zebra have? Do, do I not know everything about zebras? What am I missing here? It says pet pet zebra. Legal to have a pet zebra? Well, he's a dead zebra now. Oh, so. so that's Interesting. Crazy. Well, you don't play. You don't play with zebras, man. That'll get. I guess that'll get me thinking twice at the it's, petting zoo. It is so, arm off, man. There you folk. There you guys go. Uh, <laughs> let us let us know what you think. We're gonna be back next week. God bless everybody. Mm -hmm. Thanks for thanks for hanging out with us again. All right. Bye. <laughs>